And now from the Freedom First Sports Desk, it's First and Ten with John Apicello. Sponsored by... Welcome to week 11 of the big show. It's the close of the regular season, folks. And yes, it's senior night all around the area. So we're channeling little giants tonight, not because players are little, but because nights like this make us remember when they were. Did I pass the spelling test, Mrs. Greeley? Wow, Spike knocked him all the way back to the second grade. Well, Jeff Williamson has our website looking forward and back. All the playoff brackets coming up, plus all that has come before right here on WSLS.com first and 10. Which brings us to the game of the week. It's always nice to see schools come back on the big game radar and that's the case in Elliston where today's players would have been in elementary school when the Mustangs played in the state finals. The Perry McClure team wasn't born yet when the Blues were in the 91 state final. The two square off tonight with a Pioneer District title at stake. Our own Eric Johnson joins us now with the details from Eastmont. Eric. Hey Yappy we had two teams trending in the right direction tonight with the Pioneer District title up for grabs. Of course these are two teams that flipped the switch on their respective offenses earlier in the season and have yielded rich results from the run game. Let's get you out to Ellison for the highlights of tonight's contest. Eastmont fired up for the start, including the mascot there, the Mustang. But it was this man who had all the horsepower in this one. John Snyder bursting through for the 21-yard touchdown. He added a two-point conversion for the early 8-0 lead. Next possession is Snyder again, but look at Luis Martinez punching it out for the fumble. Mustangs recover, but the Blues had the Stangs feeling rather blue. Trey Seacrest bulldozing through to stop the run there. Look at him get the tackle, and from there, more ground shipping. It's Snyder scoring his third touchdown of the game. 22 to nothing is the score at this point. Jacob Bartley joined in on the fun. He rushed for two touchdowns tonight as Perry McClure wins the district title, Pioneer district title, that is, with a 35 to nothing shutout. I'm happy for them. I mean, I think it's great for them. I think these kids, and like I said, like we talked the other day, at 0-3, they could have gone south, and they didn't do that. They ripped off seven and, and get to call themselves district champion. Really important to me and the team. We've been working really hard to get here. So We're one of the best D-lines in 1A football in Virginia, I'd have to say. Uh, second there has gotten better since the first three games. Linebacking core is great. We've got some size, and we just rolled over the uh, O-line. and uh, got no match for us. And you heard Coach allude to it there. Seven straight wins for Perry McClure en route to this district title going into the postseason with lots of momentum. The good part is both of these teams will qualify for the Region 1C playoffs. Of course, we'll break those brackets down in just a bit. Appy? All right, thank you very much. Sticking with the Pioneer, this one has some playoff seating implications. Craig County at Covington tonight. Let's get you out for what turned out to be a really good ball game. The Rockets and the Cougars ready to roll. Covington's first possession. Get a look at Purcell Turner taking the ball and look at him. He's got the corner. Nice shifty move right there. Covington has a first down and they got some things rolling. Quarterback Javier Yancey completing the drive. This is a touchdown pass to Chadwick Tacey giving Covington a 7-0 first quarter lead. Craig County answering Covington on their first possession. It's Braden Frango to the ball to all the way to the one yard line and then Frango here finishing the drive with a touchdown. Good ball game tonight. 28-14 your final. Covington is a winner. Meantime, Narrows is in that 1C bracket. They are 56-0 winners over Bath. Let's get you to Fort Chiswell at George Witt. The Maroons are 5-3 and, and here they come. That stair walk. They're coming down and here, this is Luke Jolle here going deep. Caught by a Layden Houston behind the defense down at the foot line. It would be 7 0 G dub. Students, oh well, they like it a lot. Here comes Fort Chiswell. And we've got a blocked punt. Colton Green scoops camper score for big number 58. Chiswell would get something going. Larson Edmonds do it in himself. Breaking a tackle. This is a 60 yard scamper right here. But the drive would stall in the red zone and too much George with. Jolly deep again, little tip drill, and watch Braden Rainey right here hauling it in behind the defense. And it's George with 27 6, your final. Galax 41 6 over Grayson County is your final tonight. How about Royal Retreat over Lebanon? Holston over Chilhowee in a top seed versus four seed in Region 1D. So we look at the brackets. 
Galax is at the top. Giles is your two seed as we speak with Perry McClure and George with your three and four. To the class two ranks and the Bobcats are the Bobcats. Talented and dangerous. Tonight they meet a program on the rise. James River five and four coming in. They've been a handful for plenty of teams. Let's get shouted. Good crowd in Buchanan last night for, or tonight I should say for the three rivers. And this is James River. And this second half action, this is Radford's Landon Clark keeping the ball. He's taking it down the sideline. That's a 28-0 lead. After recovering an onside kick, Landon Clark dropping back, finding Liam Cherry. Nice touchdown pass, 35-0. James River like, looking like they would score here. Knock, knock, knocking on the door, but we've got a pick. And this one's going all the way back. Landon Clark is going 97 yards. Radford, 40 Two to nothing. Coach Beal has another playoff team in Floyd. 15-14 over Carroll County. And Giles and Glenver will play tomorrow at 1 p.m. What does the bracket look like? 2C. Glenver is at the top. Appomattox is the 2 seed. We've got a collision course with Radford and James River, the 3 and 4. You'll never get anywhere treating your helmet like a lunchbox, son. Salem knows there's no such thing as a free lunch, so they were back to work tonight. The Cavaliers looking to continue to feed that power ground game and in Bassett. The Bengals have been feasting all year. We'll see if the Bulldogs can derail that dinner schedule plus this. All right, let's get to Blacksburg at Cave Spring tonight. And Coach Nick Leftwich's gang opening drive night. Skylar Griffiths chucking it deep for Cameron Gerald's. Nice haul in right there from 29 yards out. Cave Spring had the ball over nine minutes looking to punch it in. Then this happened. Fall ball recovered by Spencer Campbell. Well, he knocked the ball out. Luke Poff recovered it inside the one. Still scoreless. Griffiths finds Bryce Cooper. Splits two defenders. Now we have a touchdown. 7-0 Cave on their way to a 21-14 victory. So the former Salem quarterback busy rebuilding the Knights program. Meantime, his alma mater doing what they do, taking care of the River Ridge. Yeah, and so far, nobody has been able to take care of Salem. That's right, and, and that's, that's the norm. And that is the norm in yeah. the River Ridge, and um, obviously... It's been fun to watch it unfold and see whose test can, okay. can handle it. But, Appy, the hardest thing for this team to stop has been Salem's efficient ground game. Patrick Henry did do a pretty good job in the first half controlling the Spartan pace. And it wasn't like PH wasn't able to turn and burn when they had the ball. Check out this bomb from Joey Beasley. Jose Kimbrough taking it wow. the rest of the way to get within one point of the Spartans. But there's a reason why Cam Leftwich was a first and 10 player of the week this season. Dude can roll over anyone, including a stout Patriot front. But he wasn't the only offensive weapon tonight. Salem's biggest advantage is the option through the air. Chauncey Logan Jr.'s hands a magnet to the ball every time. PH gave Salem perhaps their best challenge of the year, and they fall 37-13. Well, Coach Football Team Patrick Henry is. I have a lot of respect for Coach Fiddler and his staff. We want to play focus and discipline. Hey, that's a hard, tough first half, 7-7 seven, seven at the half. And we come out and told my guys, you're going, to be, you're going to be in a football game for four quarters, and you're going to have to focus yourself and do what you need to do, execute in all three phases, and back on they did that. And according to our playoff tracker, Salem will host Amherst next week. PH will travel to Mountain View. Appy. All right, we'll have those complete brackets in a second, but more River Ridge tonight in the top seed in Region 3D, Christiansburg battling Pulaski. Let's get you out, and the Cougars always tough at home. First quarter, Pulaski with the ball on Christiansburg's nine-yard line. Chris Gallimore, John Lyman. We've got a nine-yard touchdown pass in a 7-0 Pulaski lead. Second quarter, it's Tanner Evans, former player of the week. 14-yard gallop and go. And we've got a 7-7 game going into the half. Third quarter, it's Gallimore going deep. But he's got Travis Altizer there who picks it off for Christiansburg. Their D starts to tighten. Few plays later, Kenyon Johnson Buchanan here running it in from 14 yards out. And a look out later in the third. Christiansburg's Casey Graham going to Drew Lloyd for another touchdown. That's a strike. Blue Demons 41-28. 
Lord Botetot, after a murderous early season schedule, looking to make an undefeated run through the Blue Ridge District. Last hurdle tonight is Stanton River. Let's get you out for that one. And senior night for the Cavs. Shout out to the color guard. That's D, and there is Sydney. And congrats to them as they continue their senior year. And now to the speedster, K.J. Bratton on the counter. He's going 29 yards, turning on the afterburners. He's going to score, and it's 7-0 Botetot. 14 nothing, and we've got more Cavs coming at you. Jakari nicely going up top to Bratton. Aaron Darren, 42-yard connection. Pretty throw and catch, 21 nothing. Then it's nicely from the 47. Watch the caravan of Cavalier blockers forming on the left-hand side. And, yeah, that is an open lane to the house. Joey Isaacs also had a pair of pick sixes tonight. All LB, 70 to seven, your final. Northside at Franklin County tonight in another Blue Ridge District affair. Third quarter, Northside's up 22-14. Jalen Lee, and he's going to find a wide open path to pay dirt. That is a house call, 49 yards out. Next drive, Lee again with the ball. He would be lunging over everyone for six more points. Switching things up here, it's Eli Fouts is uh, going to go back and hit a wide open Nasser Holland who's going to run it on in Franklin County 42-22. They are victorious. So William Bird at William Fleming. The Colonels trying to salvage a disappointing fall with another victory third quarter. Colonels up 21-7. This is Deshaun Lewis to Nashawn Bonds. 32-yard connection. Fourth quarter, Lewis is going to roll right, fire across his body, looking for Devin Johnson. Makes the catch, little rivet pivot, and he will dive to the half-yard line to set up a touchdown. William Fleming, 35-7. They are victorious. What does the 3-D bracket looks like, look like? Christiansburg's your top seed. Uh, Abingdon is the two. Bassett is the three. Hidden Valley will host Lord Botetot in what should be a good one, a 4-5 matchup. Meantime, the 4-D, we know about Salem, and there's G-Dub hanging out at 2. Western Albemarle on EC Glass, 3 and 4. We'll move to 5-D. Stonebridge is your top seed, but it's PH who's going to have to travel to Mountain View in round 1. And Franklin County in 6-A will have to travel to Western Branch. Well, they've got your names on the back, so the guys at the morgue can identify the bodies in LCA's case. It's more about giving credit where credit is due. Showdown tonight versus EC Glasses on the way when we come back. Piedmont battle south side. Martinsville at Bassett tonight. Martinsville a quick handoff. But as we'll find out with Bassett, they're physical and there are turnovers. And this is Jamadi Johnson, the scoop scamper and score. And suddenly it's 6-0 Bassett. And how about their quarterback, Jerikas Hairston? He is a big-time athlete. And uh, who's tackling that young man? Not many people. Martinsville here, um, uh, Isavius Martin here with the ball. Another fumble. Again, they're physical on... Uh, and special teams, they're physical on defense, they're physical on offense, and it causes trouble. Here, the recovery, and then Ben Hoffman in the end zone. Look at that pretty pass. 47-3. Bassett is a winner. More Piedmont scores for you. The Comets fall, and the Warriors over Patrick County, 45 20. Eric LCA jumped on my radar last year when they took out Heritage. They won the region. Right. And then that crazy game with, with uh, Lord Botetot, where Barely the bottom top game and edged it at the end. Right. Um, now they haven't skipped a beat. I yeah. mean, they've been going straight they, through everybody. They've looked like the atomic dogs out there, and all the other teams in the similar district. They've been trying to play dog catcher, right? Trying right. to catch up with what the Bulldogs got out there. Let's head out to the matchup tonight. EC Glass at LCA. Late first quarter. This is George White finding Robert Wood in the end zone for the touchdown. Hilltoppers tie the game up early. Second quarter, the Bulldogs. On second and five is Jaden Skate. Look at this. Skate into the end zone. 17-yard touchdown. They go up 14-7. to seven, But Glass had an answer for everything early in this one. It's White going deep to Lavarius Gilbert oh. in triple coverage. Wow. Yes. Gets the touchdown to tie it up. But LCA pulled away late. 
41-21 to remain unbeaten. How about Heritage hosting Amherst County tonight? First quarter, it's Zach Steele, a man of steel here. Look at this. Runs left, oh. spins off a defender, redirects, finds an opening, and he goes 56 yards up the sideline. They set up Heritage at the 13-yard line just four plays later. Quarterback Cameron Burns, feel the burn. Touchdown right mm. here. Seven nothing Pioneers later in the quarter. It's Burns yet again. This time hands it off to Kenneth Crawford. He goes in for the touchdown. 14 nothing Heritage on their way to a 55 to 20 victory. Other seminal scores for you. JF over Liberty, 35 to 21. And Rustburg coming up short, 7 nothing in a costly game to Brookville. Happy? All right, thank you very much. Valley District to finish tonight as they spill into the 3C bracket with the Seminole Powers. They had Turner Ashby tonight, so let's get you out for senior night at Rockbridge County High. Turner Ashby, the story. Cole Hoover keeping the ball. Watch as he breaks loose from a pile of defenders and trucks on in. 13-yard touchdown, 7-0. Knights go to the air attack. It's Hoover again, dropping back, launching the ball. He would be picked by Isaiah Poindexter here as Rockbridge trying to turn the momentum. But Turner Ashby, they're going to try this field goal only to have it blocked by Garrett Stillwell, but just not enough tonight. 31-0, Turner Ashby, your final. Three seat bracket for you. LCA, no surprise there. Heritage Collision Course, they're down there at the two seed. Brookville, Broadway, some dangerous teams floating around uh, as we move forward. Scores for you. We're in the dogwood now. Gretna over Nelson. Chatham edges out to Vista. And what about William Campbell and Dan River? It was a 10-point game tonight. What about the 1B bracket? We got to know that William Campbell will be on the road as will Alta Vista, the seventh seed at a good Buffalo Gap team. Some more scores for you. VIS Independent Schools, North Cross gets a forfeit, so we'll call it a one nothing victory. And how about Roanoke Catholic on the road taking down Massanut in 54 to 36. Was a fine show indeed. Special playoff edition coming next Friday. As always, we'll see you next week.